Hi there and welcome to part 3 of the tutorial on shooting. So um, we're going to do work on collision detection now and um, we're going to use a raycast to do that. So first of all I've put myself a cube um, just in the middle of my scene so that when I uh, play this game the bullets uh, in theory should go straight through it and you can see the bullets going through here and they're not doing anything, they're not detecting collisions yet so we'll go straight to coding that now. So if you fire up the um, bullet script um, once you have your cube in place and we'll go through some of the things that we need to do. So first up what we're going to do is we're going to need um, to track the information uh, that comes back from the raycast hits and we're going to use the method that is a non-allocating so it's slightly more efficient. So we need an array of raycast hits and we're going to call it hit and we'll need to make sure that for that variable we initialize hit um, by just saying we want a raycast hit array and we're just going to make it of size 1. Um, it seems really strange but often the raycast, um, when you do raycasting you'll have multiple multiple hits and you'll be able to take information from all of them and look through for any relevant information but our simple example here we just need to take the first piece of information, the first hit from any of the rays because um, then we know we've hit something. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is um, we're just going to do what I'm actually going to do is make it as a, a separate function I'm just going to call it um, check hits or check hit and uh, then I can call check hit inside the main update loop here so that I can keep things nice and separate and make them nice and neat so we've initialized our hit um, array that we're going to store the information in and uh, now we're going to run this this function. So there's a couple of pieces of information that this this method requires. Um, the first thing it's going to need is the actual ray. So I'm just going to make a a new variable, local variable of type ray, and call it ray with a lo lower case r. And we're going to make equal to a new ray. And we're going to initialize it with the um, the function where we pass in the origin and the direction. So the origin will be the last position and the direction will be transform dot forward. Um, this may not work if you're going to be applying gravity to it as we might do later on with this but um, for now we know that the only thing the bullet is only moving forward so we know that we can have the ray going in that direction. The second thing that we need is the, the distance of it for the function that we're going to use. So um, I'm just going to use a nice uh, the easiest option which is vector 3 dot distance and pass to it two vectors. So we're just going to find the distance between the last position and the current position from transform dot forward. Um, that's the last bit of info that this function needs so we're going to um, look at uh, creating that now. So we'll do our if statement and then we'll use the, the uh, raycast. So we'll use uh, physics dot raycast non alloc and that's the new one that I mentioned before and um, this doesn't allocate any um, memory to return the data from the raycast so it should, should be slightly more efficient um, and all you need to do is what we've done earlier and just um, initialize create and initialize an array of uh, raycast hits to store that um, information when it comes back so um, we'll just pass to it the information that it needs so it needs the ray um, it needs the hit and it needs the distance um, and because this returns this returns an integer value with the number of hits that it was detected and um, we're just going to look for the very very first one so if this value that's returned is basically greater than zero then we know that we've hit something so I'm just going to use that as the condition so if it's greater than zero then we're able to uh, know that we hit something so we'll just type in hit something as a code comment and um, we'll use debug.log now we're just going to print out the position of the hit and the way you do that is we just do hit we'll go look in the array for the very first element which is element 0 and we'll look at the point of that um, now always a good idea to test things and make sure they work so I'm going to pop back into unity that's all saved and what we should see um, down in the console is as the ray hits we should see um, information coming out about the hit. Now it's happening every frame you notice as well as we do this that um, we're not destroying the ray so um, one of the simplest methods to um, show that this has actually worked is literally to destroy 
the, the ray. So um, we'll come back to why this is not a great idea later, but for now, just because we want to see it happen, we're just going to say destroy the game object. So this will destroy the array. Um, and let's just test and see that that works again. So that's all compiled. Run it, and what we should see is that the bullets, as they hit the, they hit into the cube, they should um, disappear. So you're kind of seeing it because they're moving so fast that we don't see this last frame. Um, that is the more or less the basics. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Um, stop talking for a moment I'm going to create a um, particle system and we're going to use that as um, a little bit of a, a show for when we've hit and I'll quickly show you um, how to do that uh, in the next part of this video so you can see in this um, slightly speeded up video I create a fairly simple particle system so I keep the duration short and set the lifetime to be a random between two constants and I try and keep those values fairly small, I use 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 um, I want the speed to be quite fast to uh, shoot off quite quickly so uh, again I used a random between two values um, and I also make the size quite small and put the colour down to black uh, I also use world space for that and set the uh, rate to be zero and um, create one burst of 30 particles so you can see that they all shoot up at, um, at quite a speed um, and then I use a hemisphere shape and uh, set the radius down as low as I can the, um, the colour over life then I want an alpha to kind of fade out so I quickly just uh, set a little uh, checkpoint in the middle to uh, put the alpha quite high until the last uh, quarter or third of the, the lifetime and then by adding some trail material as the default particle to the render I get a nice effect as it um, shoots off and then I just check it against the uh, scale of the object that we're going to use it against and uh, then turn that into a prefab and we are done and um, armed with my new prefab um, what we're going to do is just code the uh, prefab to the bullet, sorry, to instantiate the particle system um, when it hits something and exactly the position that it hits things at. Now again, it's not the most efficient way of doing things, but it will work for now. Uh, if we jump back to our code again, um, all we're going to do is, so this is us back in the bullet code, um, we're going to create a public game object um, for the uh, prefab, so we're going to call it um, part Let's call it something better than hit particle system. And um, down in the code, uh, rather than this debug.log, um, what we're going to do is instantiate those particles. So we'll just say instantiate, and we'll instantiate the hit particle system at the, um, the first detected hit, so at hit zero dot point and um, we're going to orientate it to whatever surface we hit so we're actually going to use uh, quaternion dot look rotation and this will take a single vector which is the forward direction for the um, for this look rotation and uh, the forward vector happens to be the normal of the hit so if we do hit zero dot normal um, so we've got a bunch of information returned to us from this um, this uh, raycast hit and we're done so if we save this what we should be able to get is um, we look back at the prefab of the bullet to ensure that the hit particle system has been correctly put into place um, with that done we can go back to the main scene and we can test this so as we fire bullets what we should see is that the hit particle systems get generated um, as the bullets hit the uh, the cube. I'll move the cube maybe further away so you can see a bit. And those hit particles come flying off. Um, the last thing is this particle system probably doesn't. Um, this particle system doesn't disappear. But what we can do is inside of the um, particle system prefab here, if we do stop action, um, to destroy. 
uh, that way when it's finished playing once because it's not looping it should destroy itself and just make sure that this particle system has been saved and we can remove it from the scene and just one last test just to make sure is the last part of this video so as we should we should see the particle system smashing off the the end of the uh, cube and uh, destroying themselves once they're done so um, obviously this has uh, a bit to go in the next video we're going to look at um, refactoring some of this code and optimizing it a little bit um, to try and um, to try and use something called object pooling so we're not instantiating these bullets and then destroying them again this can cause some issues with uh, performance particularly if you run the game for very long you'll have uh, some garbage collection issues where it'll, the game might hang for a while as it um, cleans up memory and uh, that's not a great thing so I'm gonna maybe do that in the next video um, but I hope you've enjoyed this this uh, obviously this gun uh, object and the bullet prefabs uh, you can put them onto a first person controller and uh, create a map and you'll be able to run around and shoot and detect collisions hope you've enjoyed it